beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed you please hold someone by your left and by your right and together as a family of faith let's lift up our voices and pray in the spirit but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith the bible says pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy Pray in the Holy Ghost. Abalakato sabrande ke para susia bahashi. Are you praying? Sabrande skalabrado jate brehese de bakatash. It's another opportunity for fire, for grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One last prayer. Father, give me an encounter tonight. Please cry from the depth of your heart. Give me an encounter. Show me something I have not seen before. Open my eyes to see something I have not seen before. Let my ears hear something I have not heard before. Grant me clarity. Grant me illumination. Aparatus shalabran dege baru kesu.
will never settle for less when I know there's more than family. Turn it into a I know, I know. Thank you for your presence, for your power, for illumination, for insight, for wisdom. We bless you and we acknowledge you even tonight. Do mighty things in our midst. Let there be impartations. Let there be transformation. Let there be all kinds of encounters at the instance of your word. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Good evening. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone around again. It's always, always a blessing for me. Every time I have the opportunity to bring the word of God, you will think because I've been doing this for long, I should be used to it. It is always fresh, always new. My passion remains on fire and I always long for the times when we share together in his presence. Just a few things and then we'll get to the word. Um, number one, uh, please listen everyone inside and online. Um, I want to encourage us particularly over the issue of testimonies. Now, truthfully speaking, we have seen the hand of God in remarkable ways. Uh, my, my phone is full of hundreds of remarkable testimonies. Um, and I got to find out that the challenge for many people is the system that allows them to come and share. There are so many people who would like to share there are testimonies, some seated here, some online, but it seems like there's been a bit of difficulty, and I just want to simplify the process. It's pretty straightforward. We have our testimonies. Please listen. Our testimonies are handled officially by the media department. They have their email address for those who are outside of this environment and not localized. And you can always, you are at liberty any time of the week to post your testimony and just grant permission that it be shared. And there will always be a way of collating them together. I think that there should be, um, there should be, okay, the, the official number is there. That's the media line. Please, everyone, you can have it down and let as many people. There should be an email to please project an email that they will officially This is because we believe in testimonies. We really do. Testimonies are more than just a manifestation of the anointing upon a man. It is how people know that God is at work in a place. Testimonies are very important, vitally important. It's important that people know that not only that God is alive, but that he's at work bringing glory to the name of his son, Jesus. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad the things that Jesus did, it's important. And I want to challenge everyone here as we continually experience the hand of God, the prophecies that come, the, the spiritual truths that are communicated alongside the manifestations that follow from our obedience. It's important we make it a culture. Now please don't get into that psychological trap of feeling guilty for coming every week to share your testimony of course provided everyone generally has a testimony but we would just like to appreciate testimonies that would consider notable and the reason is because we want to challenge the faith of the listeners 
Are we together? While it is not, it is not um, too small a reason to come up and say, thank God that I'm alive. I think that um, it's, it's a testimony that would consider general, not to demean it, but then uh, we would want to hear testimonies of the mighty hand of God so that the faith of someone can be encouraged. Listen, you would see people sitting across like this and see everyone smiling uh, until you discuss with them the problems that they are sitting on and trusting God for a miracle. So, so they need to know that God is at work. So please make it a culture and um, be your brother's keeper on this wise. Do well to encourage your people. Some people are just shy. They are really very timid. Could be for sociological reasons but let me tell you this is a home that is opened and loves everyone with no prejudice with no discrimination whatsoever if you cannot speak english speak hausa if you cannot speak hausa speak your language we'll find someone to interpret there should be no pressure whatsoever this is the house of god it's not a police station it's not a prison cell it's not um any paramilitary platform this is where god's people should find expression within the jurisdiction of the word of god so i just want to encourage everyone please media find a way of promoting this that i've said online so that the our family both here and diaspora will know that we are interested in knowing what god is doing and and frankly speaking the list of the reasons is that which has to do with you know what god is doing through the man of god the most important thing jesus said and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men testimonies are publicity strategies it is important nobody wants to waste his time in a church a place where nothing works um human beings are not that free people have serious things to do with their lives and their destinies and they need to be encouraged they need to be motivated that their time in God's presence will be a time that is worthwhile. The Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. Um, the second is concerning our teachings. Now, we remain grateful to God in this house for the remarkable, literally without exaggeration, the remarkable testimonies that come from the teachings god has anointed these teachings is more than the person who has communicated these truths the teachings work because the spiritual content in the messages are true they are not opinions it's dangerous to teach opinions our lives are too short too small and too limited to create doctrines out of our experiences and so we teach the word of god the principles of the kingdom and those who believe and apply the truths that follow inevitably will return with testimonies. And so, do not leave the distribution of the teachings to just the media, the PR, and so on and so forth. I think for me, one of the greatest um, ways you can bless anyone that is cheap and affordable, more than getting clothes and all of that, is to just grant them access to these truths. There's almost a teaching on every major subject matter. Find somewhere, find someone who is hurting in an area. Find where there is ignorance. Find where there is oppression. Find where there's limitation. And just help to be a bridge, even with these teachings. It's something that must be intentional. Are we together? Believers must be trained and mentored to know that these is not just a way of promoting a man's agenda. It's your contribution towards kingdom advance. While you are struggling to know what you are called to do, while you are still flogging it out with destiny, <coughs> excuse me, what, what have you called me to do, O oh Lord? You can start from there. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Um, the third is that um, because of the overwhelming need, our public relations department, uh, they have communicated the fact that um, people call all over and the lines we have are limited. And so we have decided to at least add one more official line for the PR. Please, if you can get it to the media, let's project it if we have it so that the people can have it down. So add it, please. Um, 
the official lines of this ministry for correspondence and all of that is handled by our public relations department so please do well to have it down so that you can help those who um, would want to reach the ministry many times it may be difficult for me to respond to everybody the way we want um, but then our lines are opened almost all day almost all week um, so you can take advantage of that praise the lord the last function and then we'll get to the word of god mark chapter 16 we'll read 17 and 18 part of the apostolic and the prophetic is to be able to understand times and seasons and to guide the body of christ um again i've seen in the realm of the spirit the onslaught of the manifestation of the spirit of death i've seen the spirit of death and the spirit of infirmity and and this this is a plot you know death there are times that death can come over people but there are times that death can come over territories it's not necessarily looking for a particular person anybody that comes under the influence of that spirit will go for it are we together um, so there are three things that we want to address and then we'll get to the word number one is death number two very strange afflictions and infirmities someone will just complain my head my stomach my leg and the person is gone this is how you know that a thing is demonic and then number three although it may not have come to our region but the bible says to pray for the peace jerusalem this act of kidnapping people they just steal a human being now it's not only properties that are taken you know and this is not just an issue of terrorists again it's becoming a lucrative industry and so any even friends steal themselves are we together yes they connive with touts and pick up people and um, demand for all kinds of all kinds of uh, 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 what do we call it ransom you know very ungodly amounts that they call and then eventually they subject the people some people are raped some people are, are harmed the psychology and all of that uh, it's important for us to fortify our spiritual borders and then as part of the larger family body speak i told you that bodies only execute what the realm of the spirit concludes upon are we together if your hand steals something told your hand to steal the hand does not have a will on its own the body without a spirit is dead so everybody who is being inspired to do this there is an ideology that is spiritual in origin are we together uh, and some of these things come as a result of the laziness of people this is why we continue to challenge people to be productive no productive person will sit down and begin to look at the options kidnapping someone is proof of how you have disbelieved your own destiny that means you have concluded that on your own wisdom cannot work for you favor cannot work for you relationships cannot work for you and you settle uh, for kidnapping people mark 16 17 and 18 the bible says there are signs that should follow believers and it says in my name they shall cast out devils number two they shall speak with new tongues let's read verse 18 it says they shall take up serpents and if that means they don't intentionally go and drink but if for any reason they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them then they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover but the tragedy is in psalm 74 and verse 9 please give us psalm 74 and verse 9 read with me please we see not our signs there are signs that the bible says should be seen and the complaint now is that we see not our signs 
there is no more any prophet the correct rendition is is there no more prophet it's a question and then he says is there not any among us that know it how long that means we do not see the things that the bible says should be seen and where are the advocates is there no prophet is there no representative to tell us how long to define the limits are we together part of the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic is not in titles habakkuk said i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower that i will see what the lord should say that means it is within the power of the holy spirit given to men to command darkness and say thus far have you come and no further shall you go are we together please rise up on your feet do not be like esther when her man was plotting the death of the jews word went to esther and she was careless and mordecai said do not think that because we are outside of the gates when they are done with us paraphrasing they will come back to you in one minute i'd like you to stand as a priest that you are and decree and declare this tripartite spirits we banish first from our spiritual atmosphere and then out of kaduna state and this nation number one the spirit of death please pray number one the spirit of death oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage cause the spirit of death number two take authority over strange infirmities infirmities with no medical history demonic oppressions over people number three take authority over the wicked spirit of kidnapping and all kinds of activities of terrorists in the name of jesus we command we decree and we declare we stand as watchmen and we declare our territory sanitized from these operations from these afflictions in the name of jesus Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Hallelujah. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. We banish the operation of death first from this family. Second from this city third from this state and fourth from this nation you are a spirit you are not an occurrence we call you by your name and we banish your operation in the name of jesus christ number two strange afflictions in the name chabakatos kebrakata shkelebarakatos ebregete kaparusia in the name that is above all names any planting in your body that is not of the christ i curse it now by the god of heaven number three we pray this one is not us we speak to the elements of the earth we speak to the elements of the supernatural we command the earth and every element of the supernatural 
that any man see listen let me teach you something you see the earth is a universal point of contact everyone touches the earth the terrorist who wants to kill another person now is on earth his feet is touching the earth and you can use the earth and speak in the name of jesus we speak by the power of the holy spirit let the activity of kidnappers and terrorists within this region and around stop now stop now the bible says that he frustrates the tokens of liars he makes diviners mad so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise and if there is anyone, whether your loved ones or whoever, that is under the siege of kidnappers, we declare their unconditional release in the name of Jesus Christ. These are some of the ways, it's more than terrorism. It's also how the spirit of poverty works. When you carry five or ten million and give to rescue someone, what if that's your life savings? very demonic operations Zaria we speak to you this is our domain in the name of Jesus we draw a line across these spiritual borders and we declare it sanctified in the name of Jesus we decree and declare that any activity that is not the Christ sponsored by the spirit we banish its continuity In the name of Jesus, please be seated. God bless you. You see, please understand this. The believer is not a cause to creation. The believer is not, is not, is not a nuisance to civilization. The believer is not a luggage that our sociology is trying to manage no the ideology that we have been given is an ideology that transforms it does not destroy are we together so it's important that that we continue to emphasize believers please more than knowing who we are we must obtain grace from god to be the light and to be salt not to sit down and hope things change not to sit down and be careless and say it does not concern me you see god has worked with us way past the issue of denominations and personal doctrinal affiliations and all of that we are we are we are members of his body what happens to one happens to all it's an ideology that we must carry it's an ideology we must sustain hallelujah praise the lord Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Very quickly, we'll get to the business of the night. The keys of the kingdom. We are on a revision series for some of you who are just coming. So many people we honor and we welcome and we truly bless you tonight. Let's get to the word of God. The keys of the kingdom. This is part two. We are on a revision series. Um, the way that God trains us in this place is very intentional. It's very meticulous very defined the the exegesis of scripture here is not just meant to be part of the things that happen in a service but by the grace of god there is a portrait there is there is a picture of what god seeks that we become praise the lord and as we strive by the guidance of his spirit and through the spirit of wisdom we continue to bring teachings that are spiritual in context, that are balanced, life applicable, and are transforming again. And um, every once in a while, before we get into another level, God would grant us grace to do um, somewhat of a revision. That means to go back and look at the things that we have learned by the Spirit correct the gray areas because you see nobody leaves what works nobody leaves what works and if our christian lives 
um, if it continues to be unfruitful, we will be frustrated. The Bible says, Herein is our Father glorified, John 15 and verse 8, that ye bear much fruit, not just fruit, much fruit. It says, So shall ye be my disciples. This will be proof that I mentored you. Your results will show that I mentored you. Are we together? Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. We started off last week. Jesus was speaking about the keys of the kingdom. And I started just a quick recap how that there is only one key to the kingdom. One key to the kingdom. And that key is not an object, is the person Christ. Christ being the door, the authorized entrance point. We observed last week that... Um, there are not only doors, there are also windows. There are other illegitimate routes into a house. But the authorized channel to any house is called a door. If a visitor jumps through your window, he's not welcome, although he's in your house. Are we together? So Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus never said, I am the window. I am the door. There is only one key to the kingdom. The Christ, the door. But when you get into the life of the kingdom through the experience that we call new birth, then the kingdom functions by keys. A key is a symbol for access. Access. So the keys of the kingdom are the truths that grants the believers access to function effectively, to be in experience a true representation of the image, the character of the Christ and to manifest the possibilities that are in this kingdom and um, the keys of the kingdom are the access points that activate and deactivate possibilities the faith life is a compendium of infinite possibilities that means there is no end to how far there is no end to the potentials that are contained in this faith life my life and your life no matter how yielded cannot exhaust all the possibilities that are contained in the christ and so our life should become an like like an explorer's life we continue to explore different dimensions of the possibilities contained in the christ i said something last week that i would like to say before we take off from there the word of god is very important in helping believers know god and in helping believers become effective and the word of god is important because it defines the boundaries of god's commitment to man please you have to understand this god is not indefinitely committed to man there's no record in scripture that allows for god to be committed to you anyhow he's committed by predefined conditions and that condition is encapsulated in the word it's important to know this now his compassion can respond to any issue of your life but it takes the word of god to define how far his hand can come towards you it's very very important compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of a man's infirmity but he has exalted his word the bible says above his name I say this because many times believers think that God is committed to them and we continue to quote a lot of wise sayings, trado African approaches and we believe that it will, it will draw sympathy and because God is love, he will respond. But then you will never see results until you bring yourself in alignment to the word of God and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation this is very very important the word of god defines the boundaries of god's commitment the word of god shows how far he can help you any provision that the word of god does not allow cannot be accessed by the saints so it is important that believers don't learn and know the word of god just as an option if you want to be spiritual then take the word seriously if you don't want to be spiritual you can roam around the things of god no there is no victory 
outside of the word the word of god is the testament is god's commitment is his vow the word of god is a definition of how far the terms and conditions it's important that we know the word there's no place in scripture where the bible records that satan comes to steal prayer no he can stop prayer but he cannot steal prayer but if that seed is sown the parable of the sower the seed is the word of god and satan cometh immediately not a demon he comes himself and he steals the word are we together very very important so we have to pay attention to the word right we began to show the sequence of spiritual growth last week how that it matters for us to understand the sequence of spiritual growth when a believer encounters new birth what next what is the next assignment listen there are many frustrated believers today because of the religion of following christ now take note of my choice of words the religion that means that there is no life and no power there is no intent and no goal why do i have to serve god are we together so when believers get born again there's no motivation for spiritual growth there is no motivation for increase at best their motivation may be a desire to be like their pastor meaning to go into ministry and this is not a very proper way of mentoring believers because the vicissitudes of life itself is they are distracting there are too many things in life to distract a believer you must be able to have a road map that guides if i get born again where do i go from here and why the average believer after responding come please after responding to an altar call honestly does not know what he should do again and he would have to subscribe to the ideology that is predominant within the territory where he got saved now it looks very simple but sometimes it can be very poisonous because it matters who talks to you about god and it matters what you are told it matters the jurisdiction of the spiritual information that is supplied you you can hate god because he was wrongly proposed you can have imbalance in your spiritual life because some well-meaning but maybe ignorant person communicated a dimension of christ in a lopsided way and i told us again and i've shared it here in this house that how we grow matters not just that we grow now think with me for instance that this gentleman just got born again and the next topic he hears is love and marriage or financial prosperity as powerful as it is this guy is already in trouble you see there, there is a foundation of truth that he should be taught to make the issue of marriage or the issue of finance make sense you see that now if this guy has not been taught things like how to deal with the flesh conformity to the image of the christ you know how to rise beyond the vicissitudes of this life that life of surrender the prosperity is going to destroy this man he will have the money because the principles work but it will be at the expense of his soul but the bible says to prosper even as your soul prospers that means while you are prospering in other areas there has to be a check if you find out your soul is not prospering then you need to vet the system you are following if it's god's system you will prosper even as your soul prospers hallelujah when a believer gets born again this is the sequence or gets saved the next assignment of this believer is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit remember jesus from john 15 john 16 in fact john 14 he began to talk about the ministry of the holy spirit that he was on his way going but the comforter the comforter whom the father will send in my name the gospel of john he began to introduce us to the holy spirit when he gets to chapter 16 he says i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth so you see his assignment 
he will guide you into all truth that means you have to be guided truth is not on the ground and you just speak anywhere you have to be guided and that is in the office of the holy spirit as a distinct personality of the godhead to guide believers into all truth studying scripture without his guidance will lead to error imbalance and religion when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will show you the things that will come he will take up what is mine and give it to you are we together so this man is introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and that encounter with the holy spirit first begins to open his organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit because the bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit number two the bible says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit he cannot receive because they are spiritually discerned are we together no matter how illiterate no matter how educated no matter how enlightened the moment you want to start that spirit work you have to subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit it is very very important if you do not subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit you will you will walk with god purely based on intellect or based on the sociological context of life and all of these things are within the three-dimensional realm you will not be able to walk with the holy spirit and walk with god outside of this realm if you are together please say amen, amen. you can mechanically pick the bible and just begin to read like any atheist would just read to know about the christian faith but this book that you see has to be opened by the spirit Isaiah 29 and verse 11. It's a popular scripture here. Please give it to us. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. Read with me. It's projected. Please. One, two, read. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is what? notice it didn't say it is closed it is sealed so you can open it and yet it is sealed next verse 12 and the book is delivered unto him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned you see there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned come together and depend on the holy spirit this is very important because the ways of God are not the ways of man. The methodologies of the kingdom sometimes are very ego stinging and insulting. And until you become spiritual by your submitting to the Holy Spirit, you will not be effective in your spirit work. That was why Naaman refused to wash. He was angry. He was embarrassed. What kind of nonsense is this? You brought me to embarrass me before a prophet the prophet did not even come out to even honor me is it that he's not aware that i am naman the captain of the syrian army and the little lady encouraged him and said look um if he had told you to do another thing that is worse wouldn't you do it and the man humbled himself watched seven times in a very dirty river and then came out clean the ways of god alas master for it was missing they where they met with prophet elisha was very very straight narrow and they went to a greater place and while they were felling the trees the axe head fell you would expect that he would say who can swim so that we'll get it quickly but th that was already a hopeless situation scientifically he said where fell it and he took a stick threw it there and all of a sudden it came back the prophets began to eat and they shouted there's death in the pot and he took flour and sprinkled on it and said go ahead and eat it's been cleansed so the, the ways of god are a mystery you have to understand a serpent comes and is buffeting the people and then a brazen serpent is lifted and they are told to just look at it that whoever would not look at that serpent will be a victim of this one very very powerful the ways of god in god's economy there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty are you seeing that now yes so it takes being spiritual to really really 
become a kingdom person now i began to share with us a few keys of the kingdom will continue from there bless god number one we looked at two last week number one was the concept of starting and prioritizing god god only god first god above all and we explored the first three words of genesis or first four words of genesis 1 verse 1 i'm just doing a quick recap the bible says in genesis 1 verse 1 the first four words in the beginning god the beginning of everything must be god you do not ask god to come and patch your life you don't create your agenda create your plans and ask god to endorse it uh -uh. he's alpha omega not chronos omega god will not join you on the way he has to start are we together the bible does not call him chronos you don't call him to join the bandwagon of your will and your intentions he's alpha and omega and so we challenged ourselves that it's important that in this kingdom those who excel in this kingdom are those who must exalt god and his purposes above their desires above their intentions i want it this way but i acknowledge the fact that when god becomes above everything he protects he preserves two we spoke about the concept of success tying it with the law of the mind is very important that transformation is important in this kingdom in this kingdom we reign by light we reign by knowledge and that knowledge comes through transformation transformation through renewal and enlightenment take notes transformation happens through renewal and enlightenment renewal because there are old ideas that are there that may not be consistent with the ways of christ not everything in your mind is dangerous not everything in your mind is wrong but when you come to christ the holy spirit adam before his fall did not need renewal there was no need for renewal are we together the content in his mind and his understanding came directly from god satan began to sow a seed of an information when jesus came the bible says um, god now came walking in the cool of the day adam where art thou he said i heard thy voice but i hid because i was naked and he said who told you that means you have captured in your mind an information that did not come from me who told you who told you you have banked an information that is a seed that will grow are we together yes i hope you know that it is not only god that is the sower of the word it is not only satan two souls remember in the parable of the wheat and the tears while men slept an enemy whoever that enemy is we know he's a farmer too because he sows so you can wake up with ideas you did not sleep with you can wake up with a harvest you did not remember sowing this is why transformation is powerful you look at a little child a little baby that looks very helpless in the hands of the mother and give the child one or two years the child will begin to pronounce words and you are wondering where it's coming from the baby will wind his or her hand and give the mother a slap and while the mother is crying the baby is laughing where did that come from certainly not from the womb but where for god's sake did that come from when has the child associated cry with joy are we together now so you see the kind of world that we live in he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me and then the way life works ensures that you remain um a sinner in many ways the anger from the boss man i mean what he would do someone depriving you of your right and you know all of there are too many things within 24 hours that can destroy your understanding and then the bible says in romans chapter 12 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren it's not a sermon it's a plea by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of service verse 2 says and do not be conformed here it is do not be conformed to this world is the greek word aeon 
the thinking pattern the system of operation that comes with this cosmos it says but be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind and that by that you will be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of god philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mindset there was a thinking there was a body of conviction that made jesus that flawless when he was on earth and he's saying allow the word let there means allow allow this body of beliefs allow these belief systems to also be enshrined in your understanding very important ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened then it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind when your understanding is darkened you are alienated from the potential the experience of the life of god it says through the ignorance that is in them transformation is very important there is almost no hope for an effective christian life for any believer who ignores transformation and it's important because africa is a very superstitious continent and in nigeria where people who are very spiritual we would we would opt for wise sayings we would opt for a mix of trado african christian approaches and would not settle down for the word of god that is balanced truthful intelligent and transforming and this lopsidedness continues to produce the different qualities and the versions of christians that we have and all those species will all be credited to the wisdom of god and it's not entirely so because there is a species of man that god cannot produce so when you see that kind of man you know that there was a corruption somewhere hallelujah praise the lord the mind is very powerful I taught us about success that true success in the kingdom is not something that we do true success is what you attract by who you become this is very powerful there are so many people who continue to labor effortlessly to do things financially spiritually they want to do things and there is a place of doing there is a place of action but action is only relevant when there is transformation success is what you attract by who you become there is a level of transformation you get to that cannot allow a certain level of life to remain it's impossible are we together you cannot see papa Ia deboe for instance at a restaurant trying to buy rice and fish his transformation does not allow him to have that kind of physical experience somebody will be called you will think it's because he's an elderly father of faith and you want to honor him but someone will stand up and say sir please go back home give me the honor of cooking to bring for you because his level of transformation rejects that physical result are you seeing how life works you don't say i hate poverty you are transformed to an extent that it becomes unfair to remain at that level so this is a mistake that believers continue to make we try to do things and the things we do are higher than who we are so the results continue to boomerang and bring us back to our levels our mindsets success is a product of growth it's more than doing things god can tell you you're going to have five thousand members but you have to grow it's more than just prophecy there are ethics that you honor at every level of growth and as you continue to transit your results continue to change to reflect the change in you as you change your clothes will change as you change your honor will change as you change your communication your understanding as it's changing your relationships will change everything continues to change to reflect the changing person you don't go and look for friends you attract them by your growth are we together you don't go around hand picking people this is the this is the labor that god saved us from through transformation look how painful it is to go and select friends how do you know the person will not change tomorrow allow the wisdom of god to select them 
Your assignment is to grow. Does not deep call on to deep. When you grow, it begins to change. You cannot be wealthy and have poor friends. It's not about driving them. The law edits itself. It edits your possibilities. The moment there is that transition, your one room starts pushing you out without an intention to leave. You don't have to say, I must, I'm tired of this place. No, that's not wise. Grow. There is a level to which you grow. Your one room will push you out and the laws of God will back your exit. They remained in Egypt until Moses started bringing an information. Moses said, thus said the God of the Hebrews, your 430 years is exhausted. He didn't preach in one day. They kept hearing it. While they started believing an exodus, there was, there was, the, no matter how bound they were, they were forced out of the place. Listen, it is frustrating. This is why a fake life, and oh dear, God bless and help our generation. Gathering physical things that are not reflected in your growth is a waste of time. It was authorized to live and it must live. There is no power in existence that can keep it with you. If I bless you with one million, your mind and your mind has not grown to that level. Your mind will interpret that one million as an attack and will fight its exit until it returns to the value that reflects your growth. It's not the issue of a spirit of, of, of uh, poverty. No. Satan is an opportunist. When he comes, he looks at a man's mental construction and uses it to build the strategy. Satan does not come to a man with a default strategy. His strategy is bespoke. It's made to your mindset. He will study your mindset from it, study your vulnerability, and carve out a strategy from it to bring you down. Satan cometh to me, but did not find anything. Satan comes to men and check, where is darkness? What gives me license? What gives me access? If your prayer life is on fire, he can't attack your prayer life. He will check your understanding of the word of God. They are called rulers of darkness. Their domain is when there is ignorance. Are we together? The law of the mind when i learned this law it changed my life i knew that there had to be an easy way it's difficult to give god glory the way many people seek success your assignment is to grow when you grow from the intelligence of that growth you will be guided on what to do circumspectly the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise and it says the way you walk circumspectly is by applying time redemption strategies to your life redeem time you don't redeem time by refusing to walk in time time is automatic but that your life becomes circumspect when you take pathways that have time redemption advantages on them like following the path of favor like following the path of mercy like following the path of growth rather than seeking things when you seek things and get them in five years and then by the sixth year it leaves you that's time wastage but when you grow in two years and attract what stays for life that's time redemption so the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise say i'm growing the third spiritual law we're doing a revision thank you jesus halus kapratuskia the law of faith let's run to the laws and see how many we can touch the law of faith numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 please numbers 23 and verse 19 read with me is projected one to read god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good the law of faith is a very powerful law the bible declares again and again in this kingdom i'm doing a revision that the just the believer one who has been justified in christ that you will live by faith 
the only assurance of your victory the only assurance of tomorrow the assurance of success is faith there is no earthly guarantee given to any man not by any uncle not by any auntie not by any certificate not by any platform the authorized platform of confidence for the believer is faith and this is the victory that overcome even by faith are we together what is faith faith is your conviction your conviction your conviction the name given to your conviction about god and the integrity of his person and the corresponding action that is taken to honor that conviction is called faith faith is not some laborious doctrine to explore in and out it's as simple as that but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able he has an ability and i know him i'm persuaded are we together very important come Sheun. look at this please now if i look at Sheun now and i say Sheun, i'm going to give you one thousand naira the first thing he's going to do is to draw from his understanding of who he thinks i am my ability my integrity everything comes under pressure at the instance of that word he would have to verify whether number one i have the integrity and the willingness to give him a thousand naira and then number two whether i have the ability i may have the willingness the integrity but not have the ability so god allowed his word so we can vet him he's not afraid of being vetted god is saying probe me probe my integrity i've worked with people under any condition through different dispensations so that your conclusion on reading this is that god is not a man that he should lie are we together now it's not something you just believe he tells you go through it i allow you to have this the chronicles of my integrity so that you will believe me when i say i can lift a man from a dunghill and sit him with princes vet it did i not raise joseph did i not raise esther ah it's powerful to believe god there are people in ministry waiting for uncle or auntie to hold some ceremony and to assure them of some support system. Um, there will be one building that you'll be using and will be giving you 30,000. You will never rise. You will never move. Listen, if it is God, he will prove himself. Faith. Powerful. Find a believer that has faith and understands faith. Now, faith is not just blindly believing faith is conviction are we together and that conviction comes through understanding you have really understood god and his ways when you know where how you contribute in terms of your partnership your participation listen bible faith does not leave everything to god there is always man's role in that equation please understand this Bible faith will never allow God to just do everything. There is always the participation. And your participation is your believing God and then subscribing to the terms, the conditions that guarantee for that outcome. This is where many believers continue to miss it. Faith is more than just confession. Faith is more than just receiving, as important as they are. They are all equations in that, I mean, variables in that equation of faith. But Bible faith is not Bible faith until you find the condition allocated. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day, that the Lord thy God, now watch this, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2, it says, And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you. Condition, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord, if thou shalt pay attention, if you place value on the speakings of God, if you place value on his ways, his intelligence, his methodology, you will not be exalted above all nations just because you want to get there. 
Bible faith is not just confessing and now from this scripture, you say in the name of Jesus, I'm exalted above all nations. You are correct. But if you stop there, you will live a frustrated Christian life. There is a condition. While you speak, you release that word. But more than that, you have to go back and find out. So what is the voice of God saying? What does it say? The voice of God, the logos of God, his thoughts, his intents. What does he say? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, 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 not just say, do all that is therein. It says, then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Good success. That means if I'm manifesting faith, then I must begin to understand the ways of God. The ways of God. Every time you are learning the laws of God, every time you are understanding the methodologies of the kingdom, you are in extension manifesting the law of faith. It's proof that you believe God. It's proof that you expect him to work. Are we together? Yes. The law of faith. You must believe in God. This life will come with so many things that will threaten you. When David stood before Goliath, he said, You come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of heaven, um, uh, the, 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 one, the, the one whom you have defied. He was speaking to Goliath. You have to stand and look at life and say you may look like a mountain but faith deflates mountains it is true it is true time will fail me he says to talk of gideon jephthah barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions listen let me tell you the truth there is nothing in your life and around your life that is new under the sun it takes faith to subdue say in the name of jesus by the faith of god at work in me i subdue every mountain don't approach challenges as if it was uniquely no 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 there is nothing special about challenges it is defeat that should be a surprise don't be embarrassed by the mountains that stand before you find out the provisions that make for your victory and engage it as though your life depends on it and let the god of heaven who is not a man that should lie come and prove himself in your life every testimony here is faith the equation of faith completed trusting god please don't doubt god i know that we live in a sociological context that places very little reverence on god we make it look like if you cannot see how one plus one is equal to two one plus one plus god is any answer he says it should be any answer by what standard will you say he failed if a house is my own i can choose that the back door becomes the main entrance it's my house so you don't say because i entered here yes this is my house you are a visitor anywhere i show you that the door is you follow there kai this god hmm. god can decide to say 2018 plus 2019 should be equal to 2001 to 2017's result together this is god for you 10 years in one hallelujah the law of faith let's run faith is very important we have dealt with the law of faith here we have discussed the law of value as one of the kingdom mysteries for an effective christian life the law of value Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, the Bible declares that the gift of a man will make room for him 
and bring him before great men this is a very powerful scripture because it does not lie sincerely let me tell you this is one of the I, I, I can't use the word truest scriptures but this scripture you see please have a lot of regard for it the gift of a man truly can make room for him it didn't say we'll show him where his room is until then there is no space for you the gift will make room for you like a visitor comes to your house and there was no space and because of your honor for that visitor the children will come out to sleep in the parlor and you quickly make room so where there was no space for you that your gift can come and say what is going on here the table of greatness where is my space sorry there's no space no it will shift until it creates a chair for you and a throne the gift of a man the gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness it's very important classic um, story is the story of Joseph Genesis chapter 41 when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46 I don't want to go into it forgive me I'm rushing because we're just this is a revision series i'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom these are the truths we engage if you don't engage this you will fail i tell you sincerely they are not opinions they are not doctrinal perspectives when jesus came he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom it's it's important that we understand the methodologies of god it's not the discourse it's not an invention of one man please understand this J jeremiah 6 i believe verse 16. let's go there and then we'll return here jeremiah 6 16 the bible says to ask for the ancient part it says stand in the ways and see and ask for the old part wherein is the good way it says when you find it walk therein and ye shall find what rest another word for rest is sabbath the sabbath of a man comes the bible says labor to enter your rest that labor is not a labor in the flesh it's a labor of understanding 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 that there is a belief system there is a construction when you hold the keys of the kingdom they can bring you in experience to your sabbath so two people all saved by god can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results and the difference is not the love of god for them for the same lord is rich unto all the difference is their understanding psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says have i not said ye are gods and all of you not some of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but he shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so your destiny is not just left to god how can i lie sharia whatever will be will be those wise sayings are poisonous are we together the law of value very very powerful you will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out to sit with kings your value decide who decides who pursues you it is true and who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward god designed life to operate based on a reward system there's no sentiments to it life operates based on a reward system that means that no matter how bad my background is no matter how bad it was there is a bailout system i can be valuable i can find my way out of every nonsense in life it has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you it's a principle backed up by god's own integrity when you discover and you develop problem solving abilities when you become fruitful when you become productive it's impossible to be ignored regardless of tribal affiliation regardless of sentiments regardless of age and gender the world 
does not have too many people who are valuable please understand this potentially we all are but in experience there are few people per territory you can you can do a random sampling there are few people per territory who are really valuable so it's impossible to be ignored it's like holding bright, bright light in a very dark night how could you be ignored I show you what will take away mediocrity from your life. It's impossible to be ignored. You may ignore my background, that's all right. You may not like my persona, that's all right. But the value I carry, then anointed by God, developed and served with excellence, it's impossible to ignore it. And we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you there is more there is more than a weak and a mediocre life there is more than a life of just getting married having children and managing the problems of life until death takes away your life there is more than that there is a life of meaning and glory and beauty he has called us into glory and virtue he has called many sons into glory where your life becomes an influence for his majesty your life becomes an inspiration to a generation. More than just food to eat. More than a little house here and there. I have one house, two cars, one estate, one business, a wife, my children, and that's it. That's a mediocre life. There's more than that. Are we together? The Bible says that you are the light of the world. Jesus is teaching here now. You are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. He says, if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men. He says, you are the light of the world. Then he says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's the word. You cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability. And my brothers and my sisters, when the glory of God comes upon who you are and the works of your hands your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder one wonder connecting to another when people think they have exhausted a dimension here you come like the eagle another page god does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity no it's a very poisonous proposition he desires that all men, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, that we have all been made together unto our God, kings, or a kingdom of priests, kings and priests. And he said, we, not one person, we shall reign on earth. Please believe the word of God. It's not a scam. Believe the word of God. It may take time. And while that is happening, different people can argue about what they think or know about your life. But just allow the word of God take you like a lift. It will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder. And all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise. It's called doxazo, the flaunting of a king's glory. Now, thanks be to God, he says, that causes us always to triumph. Are we together? And Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so much. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. Hmm. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you. 
being an evil person gives you being a northern and gives you being a middle belt a south a southern and there is an advantage that being an american citizen a british city, they all have their advantages but they are still limited ah but now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Otherwise people like us would not have a stake in life. But hallelujah. Ah. You may laugh at my background but watch my future. You may laugh at yesterday, but not tomorrow. Between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne. I will not remain at the cross. Jesus died for only three days. He didn't die forever. Man should not remain at the cross forever. If you remain at the cross forever, it's a sign that death has swallowed you up. Are we together? Please shake off that mediocrity from your life. Don't, don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to insult anybody. But please have a healthy confidence. You may laugh at me, but not the one with me. The Bible never said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm successful. We say, with God. Laugh at me if you don't, if I'm alone. Laugh at me because your prophecy will be right. But with God. Renard Bonke, I remember those, those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade. He said, even if you call him a big zero, the bigger the zero, God is the one that is added to the zero. So if I'm five zeros plus one, if I become six zeros plus one, if I become seven zeros, so the bigger the zero, the greater the value when he comes let me give you the new living translation of that there is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of god when god wanted to humble the fallen angels he used clay to make man you see the fallen angels were not made from dust their material was light and now God decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel and they said this is not fair even Lucifer that was a light bearer an effulgence of the light of God did not have the privilege to carry the image of the Christ the Holy Spirit never came inside any one angel never came inside one cherubim but he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life. Please don't just be motivated alone. Be angry. You know, we have these funny ways of looking at people in society. You are not beautiful. You are ugly. You don't speak English well. Don't worry. My result will correct any error in my English. Appa! Don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply. You know, and this is a world of arrogance. Even one minute to a man falling inside a pit, he will act as if he still has control. Let me tell you, the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church. It will be impossible. The church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are, who are close within a religious sect. No, the social economy will see the intelligence of God. Was it not prophesied by prophet Micah that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will flow to it they will come and say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob for he will teach us his ways he says for from zion out of zion shall proceed the law not into zion out of zion say i'm valuable it's a revelation don't give yourself cheap to life just because culture just because your past just because your failures have concluded about you shake that off and know that there is a way oh rejoice not over me my enemies mm -mm. while they were discussing the death of jesus he had resurrected and was on the throne 
Please sit down. The law of value. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. The earth has too many people for you to be ignored. 7.2 billion is a lot of people. A territory can ignore you but not the entire earth. Hmm. We will all be great. And the greatest part is we will all know ourselves. It's true. You will not be great just by intention. There is a ladder that knowledge provides. One step after another, we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation. It will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking. We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. Next law. We're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power there are mysteries in the kingdom these are the keys please understand this please understand this the next key that i want to teach us is what i call you know it the mystery of exemption huh. that there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves The first time we see exemption in scripture officially was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel. Are we together? And that when the angel of death saw the blood, he would pass over. That is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you. Passing over is a possibility in this kingdom. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. He said none shall come nigh thy dwelling, but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Let me tell you, the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you. Forget about your current results. Just focus on believing it. Sometimes when you believe certain things, at the point of believing, your results will negate it, but just continue. Remember the things that are seen are temporal. It is the things that are unseen. Superimpose your possibilities. Your life. Don't sit down and say, now that I'm talking, am I not broke? Mm -mm. For our light afflictions, the Bible says, which is but for a moment. It says it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, meaning a possibility exists for them to change. Exemption. Man can be exempted. And I've shared with us that there are three keys basically. Number one is the mystery of praise. That praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men. Praise. Praise. I'm just touching it. We're not going into all of the details. Praise. One of the, the, the mysteries of exemption. Requests that should not be granted are granted. It was a young lady who danced before Herod. Danced before Herod until a prophet's head went. He prophesied, but a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said, What do you want? And was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom. And she advised her wicked mother who said the head of John the Baptist. 
and the head of John the Baptist went. There are things that should not happen that you can make happen. And there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening. Praise. When you praise God, it's called perfected praise. Praise that is intentional. Praise is a weapon of judgment. It's a weapon of warfare. Let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron. It says that to execute upon them the judgment written, this inheritance, this blessing has the saints. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when you take out time to praise God, you can praise tragedy out of your life. You can praise limitation out of your life. You've had many people's testimonies here. They love themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horse is and his rider. Not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Cheap victories through praise. It was in the days of Jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them. And he said, look, this one is not... You find it in Second Chronicles chapter 20. There's no time to read everything. And they raised their voices and began to sing. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And there was fight in the camp of the enemy. They began to kill one another. And the last person helped kill his brother. Men were going for war and they went with gold and silver. And when the army came, they found prepared blessings. Please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding. You can dance your way out of tears. You will look stupid until the results justify you. You can sing and shout. Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. Are we together? Yes. Praise. <clears throat> you exempt yourself through praise. Praise. You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice. Sacrifice is very powerful. Psalms 50 and verse 5. I'm just doing a quick recap. We have all these teachings. You can go and listen to them. Gather unto me my saints, the Bible declares, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. By sacrifice. By sacrifice. There are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered. Sacrifice. The Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings. And that night, not the next day, that same night, the Lord came to him and said, Solomon, ask what he will. And then he asked not for the life of his enemy, but for wisdom to govern the people. And he said, you did not ask for the life of your enemy, nor riches, nor this. Because of that, I will give you an understanding heart, he said. And with it, I will give you riches, I will give you wealth and honor, and so on and so forth. Sacrifice is powerful. Unfortunately, I know that it has been abused, you know, especially by we men of God who try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money. But just because something was was abuse the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use that means when you take the use out of its its boundary of relevance just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bath water sacrifice is powerful you can sow your way out of realms you can sow your way into realms sacrifice that is done with understanding not manipulation not coercion As a testimony, one time when, when we started Koinonia, I think the, the first year or so, we're just about a year or so. I remember one time, the beginning of that year, the Lord gave an instruction to carry everything, literally everything, 0.00. .00 carry everything and so. And I heard it, I knew it was God. I said, Lord, thank you for an opportunity for lifting. 
not thank you for being a robber. God does not rob. As we carried that seed and sowed in seven days, seven days, God did a miracle that is only in heaven we all know what God did. But it's a, it's a mother of miracles to this ministry, even financially. Greed is your partnership with failure. When you are greedy, you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle. Please hear what I'm saying. This is true. Greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm. You can pray your way. You can give your way, sow your way, and then invoke the mercy of God and so on and so forth. Let me talk about two more and we'll pray. Oh dear. But I hope you are getting these things. Because let me tell you, if you understand these principles that I show you, your life will become an unending wonder. It's true. It's not a lie. They are not opinions. Hallelujah. The next law, spiritual law, Kabarakatuskiada. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. These are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships please understand this everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships we are relational beings in fact the faith work starts with a relationship a relationship with jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth relationships matter in this life please listen when you master relationships you will tame life like a dog i wish i had the time but let's look at just one scripture second samuel chapter 9 it's a long reading i don't know if we can look at it second samuel chapter 9 we'll start from verse 1 destiny help us there is there is a teaching and David said, ah, I answer amen for this for even myself. And David said, is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for whose sake? Not for his sake. For Jonathan, because you are related to Jonathan. I want to change your life. Next verse. And there was in the house of one Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is here. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet. Is a son, but it's a son that cannot help himself. Next verse. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And he said, Behold, he is in Laudeba, and so on and so forth. Verse 5. Let's hurry up. I just want us to get the, the central message. And the, and the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, and the son of Amiel from Laudeba. 6. Now when Mephibosheth, ah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Behold thy servant. Seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness. Not the spirit of God. Man can show man kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. 
every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant? That thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. Ah! What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Yeah. None like you. What are you turning to say? What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. We're talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater. My God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you, sit down. I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well wishers. No. Destiny helpers are not kind people. No. It's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9. We are reading to 11. Let's hurry up please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, Please listen. I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Now listen. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table. And now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Didn't the king see his sons? Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited, but in this kingdom there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Listen. 
and then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy. Every disadvantage, you don't take blemish before the king. Did you not read Malachi? You call me a king. Why do you bring me animals with blemish? The guy already called himself a dog. The king said, it doesn't matter. May you find the man anointed by God to lift you. Please hear what I'm saying. You can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching. Please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah. But there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check, but he knows how to connect you to someone who honors your vision. Divine connectors. Number two, the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access. These ones are people who have influence. They are gatekeepers of industries. Halus Kaprando Kashubria. Who, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers that they believe that just because God, let me tell you this, sincerely, please hear me. Not every enemy is castable. Just think about what I'm saying. There are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God. You cannot cast them. When God wants you to pass through that gate, he will make them to show you favor. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are gatekeepers. A Cyrus can reject you. He does not honor God, but you are rejected. How do you cast Caesar? How do you cast Herod? So he granted favor. And when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus, they allowed it. Not every man you can just pray and say, let him leave that place. Let me tell you, there are men that would not go there. Because their stewardship is a covenant. They are not even there because of what they did. They are sitting on another covenant that God's integrity must protect. Although they are unbelievers. Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel. Because he will always remember Abraham. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth. In a desert land yet they are prosperous. Because God is a covenant keeping God. So when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not living. Find out their grandfather who loved God arranged something for them with God. Forget that they are rebelling while they are there. Their children will pay for it. But for that time, no, your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor. And you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results. What I tell you is called spiritual intelligence. It's true. These are the kinds that you need favor, influence. Did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph? He just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph. Notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh, they were allowed to serve their God. And Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest, Potipharah, the priest of On, as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere. And he still gave him as a wife. And in, in the land of Goshen, the people, it was when there was another Pharaoh 
who knew not Joseph? That was when their oppression started. So even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally, you can reign. Favor. Men of access. Please don't reject men of access in your life. It's not simplicity. You will be punished again and again for that ignorance. Hallelujah. Number three. The third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people. Gifted people. These are people who are an asset to you. Every pastor needs these people. Every father needs these people. They are the people that make work easy. They are the errands and the horse. You need gifted people. They must be sent by God. You will see a big church of 5,000 people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard. You need to cry for gifted people. Are we together? Gifted people. I have seen personally precious, great, anointed men and women of God, but no support systems, no gifted people. There are families that don't have gifted people. Every house help is a thief. Every house help is a robber. Everybody is a, I mean, you, there has to be a skilled person. Gifted people. I'm saying this so that when you are praying, you can ask in prayer, Lord, send me gifted people. Make my life easy. You have a business because of scarcity. You, you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life. Hello, is this so, 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 so person's office? Why are you here? Please, if you are, don't you know who gave you the address? And person, I'm sorry. And he leaves. You are inside there doing CEO and your company is failing. You need to pray for gifted people. No man exists as an island. Gifted. I pray this prayer all the time. And I tell you sincerely and I, 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 I stand broken before God to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people. The workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people. Has saved me the stress of any other thing. I focus on the ministry of prayer and the word. Please, you need gifted people in your life. Otherwise, life will be hard. You can't do everything by yourself. Hallelujah. Gifted people. The day your wife is giving birth, that's the day the quack doctor is on duty. You, you see what is happening? The day your child is sick, that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection. And he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth. The midwife that threw Mephibosheth, she was called a midwife. What happened that she threw the guy down? Do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child? Lord, send me gifted people in the name of Jesus Christ. And the last of all, very quickly, they are called burden bearers. The last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers. During the, your down times in life, you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne. They love you because of who you are. The flat tree of success can kill. People can clap when there is a crown on your head. But when you are at the cross, you will need burden bearers. And Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, the Bible records. And he was, he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die. He would have died there. And if he died there, there would be a problem. Because he needed to die a cause. Not just to die a man. Cause is the man that hangs upon the tree, he says. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. So if he died on the way, that's not redemption. That's obituary. And then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene. The black man, the nigger, and he, the guy gladly carried the cross. Let me tell you, I pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like David in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says mighty men, they came to David. They saw him hiding and they said, you will become our king. 
it's not everybody that is looking for results there are people who will stay with you as the landlord is driving you they will stand there and say no i will not run away men are selfish by design please every leader hear me you need to trust god for the grace for real burden bearers men and women who can cry with you they can say hosanna but when you're on your way to the cross you will only see mary and john there burden bearers there are men of god when they are, we start building project everybody just runs away when the building is completed people come and dance again to acknowledge god burden bearers even the disciples ran away but there was a woman who said let me risk my life i'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body i hope you know that was why she went she carried to go and purify his body what if she died on the way a burden bearer will be like roof to naomi your god will be my god and your people will be my people many people when they're in their dark days they never find helpers who will not celebrate with you when things are going well but you must pray for burden bearers there is an attack on the church and someone is standing to say pastor i love you i will stand by you all the way are we together i'm robber steal from your house and someone comes and says is there food for the next two weeks i will be cooking for you don't tell anybody i have to stay here i hear you want to buy back another car please my salary of two months is yours don't say there are no people like that. There are real burden bearers. It takes prayer and spiritual understanding. Listen, these are the forces that work in the life of others. And while you are seeing these things happen, there are burden bearers. Again, I thank God for the privilege. You know, many men of God, for many men of God, their greatest fear, in fact, many successful people, their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad I tell you God has taken that fear out of my life God has given me not only trusted people not only gifted people not everybody old but there are people God has put in my life that I know if they put a gun today they will stand and take that bullet Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. Taking the pain and the sorrow away You've given me peace on the night There's no need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything Listen, you must pray to God and cry that there be burden bearers will look at your wound Listen Listen, please sit down. We'll pray shortly. Listen, the Bible talks, Jesus himself was teaching. And Jesus spoke about a man. And robbers were laid that man. Are we together? And he was on the, a priest came. And a priest saw him and left going to church. A Pharisee came and left him. But there was a man called Good Samaritan. No name. Good Samaritan. He was identified by where he was coming from his territory and his character good Samaritan and the man sat down he bandaged this man took him to a private inn to keep him and said I will take care of him I'm about to go and do something when I come back whatever the cost is that's a burden bearer that's not an advisor there are people who will come and see your child your daughter your son and look at things work as ah, what is this you mean he has been writing work for five years 
I will conduct a personal tutorial. When you see a burden bearer, you will think they charm them. They will carry your own load on their own head. You are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer, you have entered the Sabbath. The person may not be a millionaire. He will be collecting 100,000 and depositing 60,000. Say, this is my contribution. There are real burden bearers. Not everyone on earth is wicked. You have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life choose for you. You select your possibilities in prayer. This ministry, by the grace of God, has been privileged to have burden bearers. Men and women who arise by the spirit. Financial burden bearers. Credibility burden bearers. There are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but i've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms that is all they do as if god did not call them themselves burden bearers It is painful to be alone. It is painful to be alone. There are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children. They had just five or six of their own children, but they raised up to 50 children of other people. And these people in old age will be in the hospital. Are we together now? Looking for one million for a treatment. And all those 40 people they raised, not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life a burden bearer in your life i've had the privilege by the grace of god in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and i'm happy doing it a burden bearer will go all out to turn your cry into weeping. That's his assignment. To insist till you laugh. Why are you about to go away? So I'm in 200 level. My father just died. My mother just died. They don't sit down and say, are you from the same village? That's not a burden bearer. It's your, what was your father? Did he know my father? I stand and I say this. Come every semester receive this school fees for give me your account number i will be putting 10 10 000 until you graduate and when you are about to graduate let me know so that i will ensure that you have a job now you have a job you are doing well sir this is the wife i want to marry oh really do you have an auditorium we are trusting god because how much do you have hundred thousand take one million go and pay for an auditorium that's a burden bearer there are churches that have had the privilege of burden bearers. That's why they don't announce we have a project of, you know, God designed men to be burden bearers. This crying on stage for money every week. No. A real burden bearer will sit down and find needs. Why is this pastor's shoe removing? That shoe would, the pastor would never wear that shoe again. Had this shoe, no, no, it was embarrassing next time you go and buy uh, we notice that this child was crying and nobody could buy bobo next week there's a carton of bobo for children that's a burden bearer and may you be a burden bearer too because it it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another you have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer May your wife be your burden bearer husband. And may your husband, may, may, what's the next one now? May your husband be a burden bearer wife. Be, because, listen, let me tell you, if your spouse is not a burden bearer, you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital. You've seen these things happen. Some persons are in the hospital, some people are selling their property, hoping that they will die. And then they later come and leave. It's, it's when they are alive. They now find out that half of the estate had gone. In expectation that you would die. 
Is that a spouse? This is why we will continue by the Spirit of God. Listen to me. Let me just digress for 10 seconds. This is why we will continue to guide people. You know, sometimes people make very, very poor marital choices carelessly. These are the things to think about. Father, is this person a burden bearer? Not for now, for the days that come. There are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair. And you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man. He can't talk, he can't walk, yet she's laughing. They say, say something about your husband. Say, even if we return in this life, I want him to still be my husband. That's a burden bearer. My generation, hear me. Open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding. And not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life. Burden bearers. In my life, I have seen this. There are men of God who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there. I am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world. And you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said, Look, this and that and that and burden bearers the lord gave the word he said great is the company of them that published it if you don't have a burden bearer you will pay for everything the one who will help you drive your car you will pay the one who will help you cook you will pay the one who will help your child to not cry in church you will pay because they are not burden bearers naomi told ruth you can go i'm an old woman don't worry at least my sons are dead i can't leave you please just go live your life leave this old woman and ruth said no way no way mama i'm not going anywhere that means even if my future is ruined let it be at the instance of our relationship your god will be my god your people will be my people our time is gone Can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor? Will I end without teaching this? As you are agreeing to give me five minutes, it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me, you will go home after the grace. Making <laughs> my Make him 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 sit down this spiritual mystery second only to the law of encounter is the greatest truth I have found the law of honor the mystery behind the sudden rising of people like a charm a man just evaporates and you don't see him again and the only place you find him is above honor what is honor honor is the discerning please listen five minutes and we're done honor is the discerning honor is the celebrating and then if need be honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness and their usefulness the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man please help him out. for their uniqueness honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people please if you can i recommend that you listen to my teaching 
that I did at the King's Court, RCCG, the King's Court. Listen to it. I spoke on the book of Esther. The book of Esther starts in a very interesting way. Please lend me five minutes. We are still at that. The Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man, a king called Ahasuerus. The Bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his, his might. And then the Bible tells us about a woman called Vashti. Are we together? So the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman. The king calls for Vashti to come. To come and you know show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends and vashti refused when she refused the king being a very good man he kept quiet with the issue but then the advisors of the king said ah, 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 ah. this woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman if you permit this dishonor our wives and our women will start the same thing too do something about it and Vashti is banished are we together that means everything was in place in a palace the throne is still there the treasures are still there but dishonor is about to divide the kingdom into two everything still in place intelligence is there the security there a man is there but one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces and then the king dismisses the wife there is no record of Vashti saying sorry there is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king I apologize no to hell with your palace and she leaves scene three a call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory and then in a place called Shushan, are we together now? The little niece of a gatekeeper called Mordecai is fetched and brought before the king. Honor. She honored the man and she came. Honor and favor works peri pursue. There may not be time to talk about favor, but if you, if you, if you practice honor automatically, you will find favor. Favor is the reward for honor. Are we together? So when she came there, the Bible says in Esther chapter 2, please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17, that there was a grace for favor that was upon her. Now when the turn of Esther came and so on and so forth, she went to Haggai, required from him the last sentence, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her favor is a grace that works with sight when the, when the grace for favor is upon you only a blind man will ignore blessing you provided there is a man that has the eye that can see they are compelled to bless you verse 17 and the king loved esther above all the women she was not alone but the king loved esther and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so other virgins obtained favor too but her surpassed them so that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of vashti are we together and then when you read on you will find out that a lot began to happen and she declared a fast because of the threat of her man his plot to destroy the people of God and she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer the scepter and invited and said what should I do a wise woman look at honor honor is a weapon in that in the book of Esther there is no priest in the book of Esther there is no prophet in the book of Esther, there is no apostle. In the book of Esther, there is no war. There is only a woman. But she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor. She honored her man to his grave. Honor is a weapon. It not only lifts, it can kill. 
A wife, a foolish woman would have told the king and said, King, her man wants to destroy us. Will you watch your beautiful bride go? See that? But a wise woman, when he gave her an opportunity, her honor, she discerned his mood and she said, Oh, king, I want to give you what the first wife didn't give you. It was her not honoring you that took her out of the place. Grant me the opportunity to present a banquet. And the king said, finally, I find a woman who understands that with all humility, I am king over 127 provinces. Talk about my province first before my request. Don't, before your, don't come before me and request. Talk about the province. Don't ignore the achievement. It's a formula for attracting the attention of great men. Don't come before a great man and say, I'm broke. No. Are you not aware his company is doing well? You start like Esther. The province and the palace and his interest, then your needs come later. So when you go to this king called your father, when you start, it is hallowed be your name. Then thy kingdom come. Then your will, O king, be done on earth. Then when you are done, then give us this day our daily is a formula the king's interest first before your needs so esther prepares a banquet and then notice she also requested please let her man also come when you fight a great man's friend too soon even if it's your enemy you will pay for it friendship is not built in one day you will not fight it emotionally her man had done many good things for the king for one woman's plea to make him destroy the man no she prepared the banquet the king liked it he said do it again he said with all pleasure my king honor remember somebody is dying no but honor is the one killing the person and then another banquet is prepared and then the bible says she prepared a feast called the feast of wine that was where the whole thing came the feast of wine when the king drank wine and was happy he now said okay what is it and he said oh king i have a plea say it wine you wait until wine comes there is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people who is that that her man Look at a wise king. He didn't comment. He stood up and went to his garden. Went around his lounge and was just thinking. And while he was thinking, you see, but when, when it's time up for your enemy, anything will be problem. The man went to the, king, the queen to kneel down. You know how you kneel down and just say, kill me here. The king now, ah, you are even trying to rape my wife on top. That's the end of it. Couldn't he beg from a distance? He now came and knelt down close to the queen. He, he's just doomed. And listen, the moment that happened, watch this. Haman went back to his wife. Before that time, he went back to the wife and complained about what happened. And the wife said, who is this person? He said, Esther. He said, a Jew, you are finished. You are fighting a covenant, not a woman. You are finished. A man didn't you select who to fight? Not everybody is fightable. You went to go and fight a covenant. And that was the end of it. A man is hung on that same gallow. Mordecai occupies her man's position. Esther occupies Vashti's position. So who said God cannot replace men? Who said God cannot lift? Please hear me honor is powerful dishonor is dangerous there is only one reason why men fail in life carry this message dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles one more time dishonor to god dishonor to men and dishonor to principles this is why people fail in life every time i have the privilege of going to any church or ministry to minister 
I will never, never dishonor the man of God, dishonor their protocol, dishonor their system. I will walk within what is provided. It's called honor. It's not weakness. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. I tell you why many young people are dying like chickens. Dishonor. 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 The law of honor has changed my life. The law of honor has lifted me, lifted this great ministry. You can earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. When they say mention your streams of income, don't just mention real estate and shop and poultry. Say honor. A wise man will clap for you. Honor is powerful. It can change your life. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. Honor is powerful. I continue to walk this law like a chess. And you walk this law, there is no power in existence. I don't just use the precious workers in this ministry. I truly love them and I honor them. We prepare a bus to carry you after service as a way, a token of honor. Honor is very powerful. Let me tell you this. When God makes men like you, no matter what is done a, within the context of that generation you have entered your sabbath it is not enough for god to like you alone the man he uses must like you god can tell pastor femi come pastor femi i'm rounding up god can tell pastor femi to bless me he can reject that instruction while he's struggling with obedience i'm suffering i will be seen in the vision that my testimony has landed but it will remain in the dream God agreed, a man disagreed and paying the price. And the key will be honor. Honor. Is what we continue to teach in this ministry. Please hear me. You are part of this spiritual family. One of the signature traits of your life must be honor. Don't talk to people anyhow. You see elderly people, you insult everybody. Huh? No. An elderly woman is carrying something Mark, Please, can I help you? Oh, I'm a man of God. So what? Demonstrate the fact that you are called by your intelligence. Don't dishonor our children. You see my children here. Even if I'm not going to see anybody on the line, I must see these children. Nobody fights these small children and have me laugh at them. No. I will hug and they should jump on me and rumple me with their clothes. No problem. If we don't honor them, our future is dead. Honor is powerful. You see a wealthy man and he said these people were just lucky all these people how can a young man if not uh, i hear your father was this and that is it dishonor is why many people are poor and broke they see every rich man and just think he was dash he was luck no every successful man especially a successful young man you no know, one time we're traveling somewhere and I sat close to someone and I was sleeping. It was so bad. You know this kind of sleep? You are going like this all around because you are tired. And then, you know, the person was trying to, ah, you're a young man. What kind of sleep is this? I just looked at him and I nodded my head. I said, you see, this is the kind of thing you are talking about. You are not asking why I'm seated where you are seated at my age. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not, I don't mean to be sarcastic. I don't mean to be sarcastic. The first question is, how did you get here? Listen, please don't dishonor anybody. You have a job. And someone does not have a job. The person who does not have a job, you can honor your way. I've taught it commanding results. Listen to it. 
one day get up in the morning and polish the shoe of the one who has gotten a job don't say it's my younger brother it's my younger sister it's my when i was in in, in ss uh, uh, ss3 he was all those all those superstitious trado african approach to life you, you you will be punished again and again i have a great deal of respect for people who honor me sincerely if you if you if you trivialize what i represent i will not fight you but i will never prophesy to you you will not be you will not be close you will not be around my life again because i'm going to waste my time i don't love i don't hate you i will not do that i will never dishonor or despise any man called young or old no i honor all men beware of people who have mastered the art of trivializing what you represent they may be sincere but they are dangerous to your growth not to flatter you but please if you have 127 provinces it is not a bad thing to have a feast oh ahazaros 127 provinces is not a kiosk let us learn to practice honor some of you need to go back and appreciate your parents your father is a prof your mother is a prof you are there sweeping the ground in life you can say daddy mommy please whatever i have done whatever needs to come on my head how much is chicken that you cannot buy and prepare i'm telling you this there are parents who never went to school but they raised 10 children not one of them is an arm robber you think it's just there is a grace there one child is about to kill you go and meet them buy something they like and say please place something on my destiny when i was about to start ministry i met my father and my mother and i told them i said i told my mother i said you're a pastor's daughter your father was a pioneer my grandfather was the first cooking president the first cooking president and is that pioneer grace i want i knelt down when you are too big to honor you are too big to receive adaptation is proof of honor great people are very difficult people don't want people to lift you at your terms that is pride when you want someone to lift you adaptation is proof of honor there are fathers of faith today that want to invite me and you know sometimes our precious fathers respectfully speaking they also don't know the schedule but I've helped the protocol to see just be open. Be open. I will see how I will adjust anything. Not that you stand and say, I'm Apostle Joshua Selman and crash down. Honor is powerful. You are the one who loses when you dishonor men. We have to stop here. Teach your children to honor. Don't see a stranger and come and slap him. You spank the child and, and, and prophesy to the child and say, I did not give birth to this. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must change. You must become like your father. Pamper your child to have something, some, produce something that would destroy you. There are people about to start ministry and will meet everybody like a colleague. They are failing they don't they don't have the influence and the credibility and they will not listen they come to everybody ah, i'm just one of those i hear you are the femi abi the, the femi pastor femi sorry you see already even if he prays for you i assure you even if you fall down you didn't get anything yes falling down has never been the requirement for reception it is honor the door you dishonor closes towards you I never find a man that carries something I need and I will keep quiet with it no one day God will give you an opportunity to see how I honor the fathers you will be surprised it's just that honor at that level always happens in the secret I had the privilege to pray two weeks ago at Papa Ia Deboe's prayer room I was granted the opportunity and the tour and I said please grant me the grace I say what is there every prayer room what is it is it a shrine you you see this kind of thinking you every result has mysteries that support it 
when I laid down, I prayed. One of the things I told God is, Lord, I honor this our servant. You have made him a voice. A few years ago, he went to David Yonggi Cho for prayers for that church growth grace. A few years later, Yonggi Cho called him to come and pray for him. I made sure that I treated every staff there. The staff were the apostle, you are the apostle, pray for me. I said, no, I know that I will pray for you, but I came here to carry a grace. Oh no. The person seated next to you is carrying a grace that you may not, you may need but don't have. Are we together? Yes. The gentleman may not have money but he has character is a grace and is transferable the person seated next to you no matter what happens there is a covenant of supplies quarter to shame help must rise from somewhere you think it's not an issue to honor some of our mothers and fathers seated here the kind of graces and covenants that operate on their lives they can just look at you and say bless you and that's it and many of our proud generation of young people who do not understand honor is why we continue to pay for it we never rise we never shine and our light never comes please rise up on your feet i apologize for taking our time hold hands with someone i'm going to pray these are the ways of the kingdom Just one prayer and we are done tonight. I apologize, our time is up. I don't know which of these laws I have shared with you. I don't know which of these mysteries, please hear me. I don't know which of these spiritual mysteries you have compromised on. But it's time to cry to God. I have said, there are many of them. This is a revision. Just come hold him, please help him so that he which of these mysteries that you need to know which one am i missing don't say things are not working in my life nothing works till you engage it there has to be something you are missing maybe it is dishonor maybe you are not putting your faith to work are we together maybe your mind you are trying to acquire things in your life that has not come by growth please whatever category lift up your voice in two minutes let's cry to god we came to church tonight. Church is a place of transformation. The Lord has declared by His Spirit that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness.
Inside and outside, he's standing alive and able. Sata Maria Ketea, I just need faith to rise. Oh, faith, rise. Let faith arise. an awesome night of miracles God is more prepared than you are oh I'm excited there is real faith in this place in the glory and the power It's in the glory and the power. We see miracles, signs and wonders. Come on, 
Shout it inside, outside. Shout it. Are you ready now? Yeah. At the count of three, it's a shout of jubilee. Are you ready? Yeah. Please, ushers, help me bring them out. One, two, three. Go ahead and shout. instruction. We are going to shout Jesus one more time. Hear me. It's going to be fire. Literal fire. Literal fire setting you free. Get ready instrumentalist. I see the angels of the Lord lined up. One, two, three. Go ahead and shout. Everything. 
everyone under any influence outside the Lord is setting you free go go right now I command your freedom right now right now the fire of the spirit is setting you free everywhere in the overflow who is this king of glory Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle the Lord of hosts is his name hallelujah 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 I see a young man in the overflow the power of God is going to come upon you now please ushers look for him and bring him right now let it be done now in the name of Jesus a gentleman please bring him are 227 227 an MTN number who is that there's someone here you have an MTN number the last three digits 227 227 inside outside 227 an MTN number Or if you know any of your loved ones that has it. I'm still seeing it. The vision is persisting. God wants to bring a miracle. An MTN number. Ending with 227. Please, if it belongs to any of your loved ones or your friend, you can stand it for them. It's very important. I'm waiting for the young man outside. You're the one with two to seven. Your mother, your brother, with two to seven. Hear what the Lord says I should tell him. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. The Lord is saying I should tell him that he's stepping into a new face and that he will glorify him. I saw like a claw upon a shoulder that I believe to be his own. While we're praying this song, I saw that the hand was lifted. I believe that it's a prophetic symbolism of a release and a lifting. Lord, we declare it. Let it be so. You receive it for him in the name of the Lord Jesus.
by the power of the Holy Spirit I take authority over anything that does not represent Jesus Christ I declare upon you that there is emancipation for your loved ones in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah anyone with a hole in the heart a hole in the heart or any any cardiovascular challenge now it's time for the Lord to heal you whatever the complication is hole in the heart blood circulation problem cardiovascular problem I'm going to pray for you now hallelujah be free now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I command by the power of the Holy Spirit every open heart be closed now 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 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ everyone with any cardiovascular challenge any cardiovascular challenge in the name of the Lord Jesus we set you free now any cardiovascular challenge breathing problems don't stop playing please breathing problems anyone with any breathing problem be healed now in the name of Jesus be healed now in the name of Jesus of the Lord Jesus Christ be made whole by the Spirit of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I like it look at me look at me start lifting your legs go ahead and lift your legs go lift your legs go ahead lift it start stamping it go ahead stamp just stamp stamp keep stamping do what you do Hallelujah. I like you to walk around up and down. What is it? What's wrong? Jesus Christ. in one ear or both ears put one hand there if you're deaf either in both ears or one ear put your hand there if you're deaf in either both ears or one ear put your hands there thou devil of deafness I command you let God's people go now now deafness be gone that ear be open now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ inside outside I command that ears to be open in the name of Jesus every kind of deafness you are open begin to check yourself begin to check yourselves chapter 
Acts chapter 3 verse 16 Want to read. Let's read it one more time with faith in your heart. Go ahead and read. The name Ezekiel in this place. Ezekiel. 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 You, you, are, you are outside or something. I think it's in the overflow. Ezekiel. Where is your mother? Is she well? What's wrong with her? Can, can I have someone with a mic, please? Let's have people with mic. Well, she's at home. What's wrong with her? I just called her some few weeks back. She told me that she's sick. And did she tell you what is wrong with her? Yes, yes. They said it's uh, typhoid. It's not typhoid. It's the hand of the enemy to take her life. Tonight the Lord sets you free and he sets your mother free. Are you listening to me? The Holy Ghost told me it's the devil's agenda to take away the life of your mom. It's not typhoid. Doctors just call it typhoid. We take authority and we command liberation for you. You are free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 3. He said, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom ye see and know yea the faith which is by him hath given him his perfect soundness in the presence of you all hallelujah one day when Jesus had gone to heaven before he left he told the disciples he said these signs shall follow them that believe he said in my name you shall cast out devils. In my name, you shall speak with new tongues. In my name, when you drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt you. And now was the opportunity for them to manifest what Jesus had told them. And the Bible says, Peter and John were on their way to the beautiful gate. And they saw a man who had been lame from birth. And begging for arms, he looked at them. He said, John speaking, or Peter speaking, said, Silver and gold have I not. He said, But such as I have, I give. And this is all I have the authority that is in the name of Jesus. He said, By that authority, rise up and walk. And the man stood and was watching. And the Bible says, Peter carried him and he leaping stood. And as a result of that healing, there was a controversy. And so they were responding to this. And the people were amazed. They said, by which authority? By which power? They understood the concept of authority. They said, by which? Who are you representing? And then Peter gives them the answer. He said, and his name. Oh, that great name. Philippians chapter 2. Tells us that wherefore God had so highly exalted him. And given him a name. An identity an authority, a dominion, a status. He said at the mention of that name, every knee shall bow of things in the heavens, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth. He said, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. That's the name that was given to him. His Lordship. That every time we invoke his Lordship, there is a response in the spirit that causes every knee to bow of the things in heaven of the things in the earth why heaven because it must first happen in the heavens before it happens on the earth and he said of the things under the earth and every tongue shall confess hallelujah 
this is the secret of miracles to exalt him to give him praise to lift his name above then when we worship him he comes in his glory and when his glory shows up then demons are casted out then miracles begin to happen no miracle can happen when Jesus is not exalted so Jesus I am from you I proclaim you are king standing here in the midst of oh thank you for your presence we raise you we raise you high with our prayer. And as we worship, and as we worship you, build your throne, and as we worship you, your and as we worship, and as we worship. every kind of cancers and tumors and growths every kind of cancer every kind of tumor lump in your breast whatever every kind of tumor every growth in your body I like you to get ready because God is about to heal you right now hallelujah listen before I pray for all of these people there are many people who represent different infirmities here. And whether or not the Lord mentions your case, let your heart be set. Receive and begin to do what you couldn't do before. Don't receive and sit down. Don't receive and lie down. When If you have a growth as they pray, thank the Lord and begin to check and celebrate the miracle. The miracle happens as you respond in faith all right let me pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus I command cancer die go out of the bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ every growth every growth I don't care what part of your body I command it to disappear now 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 not later now right now right now right now every growth cancers die now every malignant growth die in the name of Jesus every kind of swelling go now in the name of Jesus tumors lumps disappear be gone by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost I command healing now Hallelujah. I see a lady here, you've been. It's 
like they literally flog you when you sleep you get up with the pains physically on your body the Lord is showing me a vision of someone please bring the lady out no you are not the one When you sleep in the night, they flog you literally. Come. Please, I'd like you to talk, talk to the audience. What happens to you? What happens to you? At times, it's in a dream. And I'm being flogged in the dream. When I wake up, I... You I get flogged up. in the dream. Yes, sir. I wake up with pains and weakness. Tonight, the Lord is setting you free. Amen. Holy Father... We worship you, precious Jesus, I say, oh, Holy Spirit, we wait on you, Holy Spirit, we wait on you. There's a lady here. You pass out every time. I mean, like death. You can just be walking and pass out. Who is that person? I mean, you can just pass out just like that. I hope you're hearing me inside, outside, in the overflow. There's, there's someone like that. God wants to set you free. Please, let's save time. then while the lady is coming who is Monica Monica I hear a lady's name Monica some of these words could be your, for you could be for your friend your loved one once it's a word that you identify with you can stand in for the person Monica Your mom's name is Monica Hallelujah What's, what's she coming out for? You're the lady that passes out often. Come, please. How long has this been? For so long. It has been long. Very long. How long? Can you remember? When I... SS1. Since, since my SS1. Since SS1. It happens often. You believe it will go now? You believe? Yes, sir. And forever. Hold my hands. That wicked spirit, let this girl go now. Go! In the name of Jesus. See, hold on. I command you, that wicked spirit, come out of her now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I set you free forever, 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 and ever you forever and Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Just hold on, let me pray for her. Forever, no matter how long you are be free. Forever and ever, 
Nadia, you will be free now forever. Amen. Do you believe? Yes, sir. You believe? Yes, sir. I want you to lift your hands and shout Jesus three times. Just do exactly that. Jesus! 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 The Lord instructed us that as you shout this Jesus, you are free. I proclaim you free forever. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your mom is Monica. Yes, Monica. Your mom is Monica. Yes. The Lord says I should tell you that he's opening a door for Monica. So whoever was the lady, your mom has tried and tried. Look at me. The Lord says it's not by power, it's not by might. Do you understand? Your mom has been disappointed from many people making vain promises. But the Lord says for me to tell you that he's opening a door for Monica. You have it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before, all right, before I pray for everyone in mass and we begin to celebrate the things that God is doing, uh, I'll allow Jankra, I believe that the Holy Spirit is communicating the word or two and then we'll allow one or two people. Hallelujah. So, well, just go ahead and give the word. Hallelujah. While he was talking about growth, and cancer living people the lord showed me he said there's a particular lady with growth growth in your breast growth i'd like you to lift up your hands wherever you are growth in your breast growth in your breast i understand maybe for social reasons some people may not want to identify with it but i'd like you to know that miracles are happening here and just come right now. God is going to heal you. Look, there's nothing to be ashamed like of. Don't, come out. don't. Just come. These are real miracles. This is a family. If you stand I in see. that category, God is healing you right now. Don't sit and wonder. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all came for miracles. Are you following me now? Just put your hand there. Put your hand there. You're going to check it. As the Lord heal you, you will see. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command this growth right now disappear in the name of Jesus. I command this growth to leave you now, 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 now. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the growth is gone. Check it. Check it. Put your hand there. Check it. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The growth just left. You are delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. That devil will never come back again in Jesus' name. <sighs> Lord, in the name of Jesus, put your hand there right now. Lord, I command this growth. Go in the name of Jesus. You spirit of infirmity, lose her right now. I declare that you are healed. I command this growth disappear. Right now, go in the name of Jesus Christ. You are delivered. Check it. Check it. That growth is gone right now. Check it, check Hallelujah. it, check it, check it. Tell us what happened. Okay, I had several boats there. There were so many, but I can't feel any right now. You can't feel any right now. What a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. That growth is gone forever. Hallelujah. Put your hands there. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I command this growth. Go right now. Go, go, go forever. In the name of Jesus. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. That growth is gone now. In the name of Jesus. Don't worry, you are going to check it and tell us. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we command this growth. Go. We declare you free in the name of Jesus. We declare that this growth is gone forever. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare that this growth in our breast is healed. In the name of Jesus. Leave her right now. Leave her right now. In the name of Jesus. Check it and tell us. Hallelujah. I touched it just now. And it's not Hold on, hard. please. There are two more ladies. God is healing. There is an anointing. There is an angel standing here. There are two more ladies who are in the crowd. Come out. God is healing you right now. Don't stand back. There are two more ladies who are supposed to be here. Hallelujah. There are two more ladies who are supposed to be here. Don't stand back. God is healing you. It will shock you. It's like a surprise. Hallelujah. 
I just touched now and it's not as hard as it was. It's like it's melting. I don't know. It's, it's not as hard as Before you leave this place, every trace of it will be gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, mine used to be at a particular spot, but it's gone right now. I can't feel anything. She can't feel anything. That growth is gone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just check it right now. I, I can see that it is melting. It is melting. In the name of Jesus, perfection come to you right now. Before you leave this place, you are made whole. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare perfection to her. I command every growth around her breast to leave right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare you are free. You are free. You are free. You are free. In the name of Jesus, you the devil loser right now. Loser. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for her. I saw you perfectly healed in the spirit, my dear. You shouldn't go physically healed yet. Put your hand there. Put your hand there. It will go Lord, now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Completely. I command every trace. Go. Go. Perfection. 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 In the name of Jesus, every trace of it is gone. Right now. Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. You doubt devil. Loser right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I saw someone you had, you have an injury that you've had for a while. You fell on the staircase. You fell on the staircase and you sustained an injury that you've had for a long time. I'd like you to lift up your hands around your bone region. Lift up your hands right now. The power of God is coming to you. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands right now. If you are outside, let the ushers locate that person. Around your bone. Around your bone. Your leg region, the Lord is stretching for this hand right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we command healing. We command perfection to that one right now. We declare wholeness in the name of Jesus. Is Virginia here? I'm hearing Virginia. The Virginia I know. Virginia, Virginia. The Lord is giving me a vision of Virginia. Is Virginia here? Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Virginia, I see the Lord says he's bringing speed. That's, yeah, well, that's what I hear the Lord says. The Lord says, even in your career, in your profession, I see that you are going to practice your profession in the business way. God said the pharmacy, ph pharmacy that you have studied, God said you are not really going to practice in the hospital, so to say. But I see that God is going to open door for you and you're going to prosper. I see a van. I see you with a van and I see goods. I see products. God said the anointing to prosper in that comes upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, right now, we release it to her right now. That van. I see you visiting prison. Prison, prison. I see the Lord taking you to prison. I see you going to minister to them. I see you taking drugs to prisoners. I see you bringing the word of the Lord and the love of Jesus to prisoners. Thank you, Father. I see someone. Your father is actually in a debt. And as a result of that, there's a threatening, a very huge debt. Hundreds, in hundreds of thousands, perhaps in millions, but a very huge sum. And as a result of that debt, there's a threatening to collect your house your father's property your house your father's property i'd like you to lift up your hands you are that one lift up your hands there's a threat to collect your father's property as a result of that debt wherever you are lift up your hands let me see you come 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 god says a breakthrough is coming god says your father is at the verge of a breakthrough where are you come I see that supernaturally that debt is going to be taken away supernaturally don't ask me how the lord is, is going to do it but supernaturally the lord is taking away that debt in the name of the lord jesus christ i prophesy to you that none of your father's property shall be taken i prophesy to you that your house shall be kept in the name of jesus and i declare that that debt is taken away supernaturally by the hand of the lord 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And to me, I see the Lord showing me. I see a door opening, an international business comes for your mom. I see a door opening. God is bringing an international business. I see the doors open in the name of Jesus. I declare that door wide open in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord says before you leave this place, is that you will check and you find out every trace of that blood disease is gone. God says he's taking away blood disease from you. God says he has started a healing in your body that by the time you leave this place, you will see the power of God at work in you. God says everything that you have lost, that the enemy has stolen from you as a result of this infirmity, God says restoration is at your doorstep. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord brings healing even to that sugar condition. In the name of Jesus. For that sugar infirmity shall not have a trace in your body anymore, the Lord says. As you leave this place, you see the power of Christ working in you. And you see perfection at work in your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody came in with a chronic uh, back pain. I feel one around the spinal cord. Two people, very chronic pain. I see the Lord healing you. I see the Lord healing. You. Then also, I see the Lord delivering two people from uh, masturbation. Masturbation. The Lord is delivering one person from it, and the other person, the Lord is healing him from the injury he got as a result of masturbation. I see the Lord delivering you. And for the reason of someone or two privacy, you try to meet the ministers after the service. God bless you. Jakes, please. Now, I sense that as Jakes collects the mic, there will be a manifestation of the Spirit. I want you to be sensitive. Are you listening to me? There will be a manifestation of the Spirit. Those of you that had cancer cases, believe it, every cancer case, God said he can heal. Just believe him. There's somebody here with a chest pain, right at the middle of your chest. Right at the middle of your chest. And he talked about the person, you come. There's someone with the back pain, he talked about, believe it, God is healing these people. Then there's someone with your right ear talked about those God wanted to heal in the right ear 
It's not as if you're dead, it's as if it's water. Maybe you're swimming or something, but water got into your right ear. Your right ear. Believe God is reaching out to you. There's somebody with a neck pain. Your neck. Your neck has been paining you. Just here. Come to me. Hold my hand and the Lord will show you a vision. Hold my hand and the Lord will show you a vision. The Lord will show you a vision. Hold my hand and the Lord will show you a vision. Please put the mic on his mouth. He will show you a vision. There's a young man here, you're wearing a blue shirt and you're the first son. And I see a gang of demons. They have tied your destiny. You're actually in their midst. That's the young man there, we're wearing a blue shirt. Can you see that I prophecy? see you. I see you, you were playing as a child. It's like you went to the village and you were playing and... and it's like someone took you behind and they did something to you you were laughing but that thing is speaking and you have been held captive for a long time I see God moving towards you and he's laughing and he's just dancing around you and he's laughing and he says now is the prince of this world George and I see God stretching forth his hand towards you I see God stretching forth his, his hand towards you you feel a constriction around your neck every now and then physically you feel it that pain will never come that failure will never come God says that you should dive into him that there are riches he wants to show you I hear God say he's liberating you as the firstborn son I hear God say that Hallelujah. Now, there are not many times I've done this, but will, we're going to pray and two things will happen. We'll begin to release. There will be both healing and impartations. Are you following me now? And as much as possible, I'm going to pray for the ministers and they'll walk through the crowd, both here and outside. Not everybody, they will not lay hands on everybody, but there are some of you, they will move by the Spirit. And those of you there's a lady um when that up when the time comes you got a text from your family and you're standing in for them we're all going to pray hallelujah so let's pray for this people. all of you for time's sake who is the lady with the ear problem you have one come which of the ears you're not hearing well with it feels like it's all right put your hands it will go now Ephata, now be open in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Chest pain and back pain. In the name of Jesus, lay your hands here. Be gone. Be healed. Stand up and check yourself. Make sure you're checking yourselves. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Chest pain. Lay your hands there. In the name of Jesus, chest pain be gone. Go in the name of Jesus. Yeah, problem. Your my mother has the okay, ear lay your hands. Just, yes. Be open now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What's wrong with you? My neck. My neck. Your neck and back. In the name of Jesus. Absolute healing. Perfection for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Chest and neck. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be made perfectly whole now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Your mom, put your hands on your hands, please. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command perfection for her. In the name of Jesus, your ear. Place one hand there. Place one hand there right now. In Jesus' name, I command healing and perfection. Healing and perfection. Check yourself. Oh, you can 
you out. He, he gave you a prophecy. You can meet him and then find him. Back me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release the power of God to your back. I command perfection of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hepatitis. Okay, we've not prayed that. There's, there's, okay, but since you came out, let's just pray for you. But we're going to pray for hepatitis. In the name of Jesus, be made perfectly whole. Now, I see that you have been influenced by demonic spirits. Satan, leave him. Let him go. Now, now, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Perfection. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is going to bring impartations and grace. Impartations and grace and then I will release healings. Are you following me? We have to hurry up because time is against us. We have to hurry up and then time is against us. Now, the ministers are going to walk through, but I want to pray for the ministers. Please, ministers, come. Let me pray for you. We trust that God will take us to a new level. Please trust that this anointing that is coming upon you will mantle you. Will mantle you. Shabareke pariambalada. Hallelujah. Please, as I lay hands on you, you can. Some of you can go out. Some of you can stay. We be praying for the sick. I like you to believe it. I feel the fire of God upon my hand. I feel the fire of God upon my hand. God will take you to a new level. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let there be grace. Great supply. God bless us. Ranto soto bakati lebaka. Ranto sobonto siya. Step into a new dimension of the prophetic. I release it upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, step into a new dimension. Manasseh, just hold me. Let the fire of the Spirit take you to a new level. Now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, step into a new dimension. Step into a new dimension. I release upon you grace, 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 grace to a new dimension. Grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Visionary encounters are here. Visionary encounters in the spirit. Visionary encounters opening you up to realms of power that's what the spirit of god says realms of power now lift your hands everybody clash the cymbal i'm going to release the fire of the spirit now everywhere you are get ready receive it now receive it now take it take it receive it inside outside receive it why are receive it every one of you step into this dimension Lord Jesus, receive it. Ministers, go ahead. Please go and lay hands on people inside and outside. Lay hands on people inside and outside. And the power of healing and the power of God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Step people into new realms in the spirit, new realms, new dimension. Go with this anointing. Do wonders. Go with this anointing. Go with this anointing. Go with this anointing. Ministers, go. There's an anointing of God. There's an anointing. Break the curse. Break the barrier.
the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. All of you outside, lift your hands. All of you outside, lift your hands. Take it now in Jesus' name. 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 Impartation. Jesus. I see Take it now in Jesus' name. Take it now in Jesus' name. Most of you outside, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus, fresh fire. Fresh fire, fresh fire. Jesus.
Because of our time, there's so much we can do. Come together. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade Bashkana Kata Branda Katekos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 